Do you want to make sure that all the devices on your network are using the same time? Want to maintain the correct time regardless of whether your internet connection is up or down? Stay tuned and I'm going to show you how to do this with a Raspberry Pi. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Run Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about making your Raspberry Pi the network time source on your network. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links available. Yeah, if you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notification. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. Now, here's what we're going to be covering in this video, and that's making your Raspberry Pi the network time source. Well, first, we're going to talk about what is NTP. You may not have heard of it. Then we're going to talk about the required items. And if you've already got a Raspberry Pi, there's only about one more piece you're going to need. So I think you're going to like this one. Then we'll go about configuring the Raspberry Pi for NTP. And then we'll set up the Raspberry Pi to use the GPS antenna that you're going to get trust me very affordable well first thing we need to talk about is what is ntp and that's short for network time protocol and if you've never heard of this and there's a good chance you may not have this is something that you want to be aware of and know how to use for all the devices in your smart home because when you're especially when you're troubleshooting having everything on the same time source and using the same time is going to make troubleshooting a whole lot easier all that's required is just a Raspberry Pi and one more piece. There are additional levels that you can get into for really precise timing. But for most of what you and I are going to need in a smart home, NTP is just pretty much going to be all you're going to need to do. Now, some devices may pick up on this automatically. Others may require you to use something called a DHCP option to pass the information across to the device as it gets its network address to help it use the correct time source. Some devices will automatically use their own and that's built in. Apple and Microsoft are both like that, but there is a way you can get it to use the time source you're gonna have. So especially if you're in a cabin or place where you don't have a good internet connection, you can at least make sure all your devices are on a good time source. And at the end of the day, that's pretty important. Well, this first item that you're going to need to have to be able to do this is your standard Raspberry Pi. Now you can do this with a three or a four. I would probably do it with a four just because it's going to keep you from a hardware support standpoint much further down the road. Now the other item is this little gem. And this is just a GPS antenna and the receiver electronics are already in here. So all you got to do is have this near a window. Now I'm first going to bring it up inside the house may or may not get a lot of GPS signals out of it. Usually you got to have a clear shot at the sky because there's a series of GPS satellites always in orbit that are going to be moving in and out of range. So the better shot you have at the sky is better off. It's going to be, this was uh, less than $20 on Amazon. So it's it's a nice little thing to have and it you said it helps you keep everything on well as with any Raspberry Pi project, I'm assuming that you're starting from scratch or you're going to be using a brand new SD card for something that you've already got. So I've already got my micro SD card in the reader. I'm going to put it into the Raspberry into my Intel NUC rather. And it's already picked up on that. And you don't need a big SD card. 16 gigs is more than sufficient. And we'll pick up on the Raspberry Pi OS image from January 2021. And we'll click on Flash. Now it's just a matter of it getting through the burning process. So I've got the micro SD card moved over to the Raspberry Pi and it's getting booted up right now so we should be well on our way to getting the first updates put in place in just a moment now this this has been a version of Raspberry Pi OS that I've been using on this particular Raspberry Pi so we we're going to avoid 
some of the process of having to do firmware upgrades to the EEPROMs on the Raspberry Pi. So that'll help the startup process. And you can see it's already ready to go. And well, it helps you if you start watching the screen closely and then check your Raspberry Pi. Uh, I had didn't have a good network connection, so we will rerun this again and see the the it told me right there where you see on the screen fail to fetch that said it didn't have a network connection so that's that's a good thing to remember something we will be doing with the raspberry pi is we're going to shift it over to wireless as soon as we've got all the updates in place because i'm going to have to put this at some point near the window and that will make it a little bit easier so all you do is we're about a power source and window exposure for the gps antenna now we'll go back over here and we'll do upgrade and this is where it's going to take a while now there's one little thing where a couple things we're going to need to go do. So we're going to go into Raspberry config. Now at this point with the way this is set up, it's not going to let us SSH in. So that's going to be important. What we're going to want to do is we're going to change this to say GPS so that we know which one it is. And this is one of those systems that you'll either want to statically assign it an IP address or let your internet router just do a DHCP reservation. And at this point, I'm just going to let it do the DHCP reservation. And we also want to make sure that we set the time zone. And for me, Chicago is going to be the nearest location. And I'm going to go in here while I'm doing this and we're going to set the country. Actually, don't scroll all the way down the list. You just type U and it'll get to the United States. Yes, I keep forgetting because I don't change the host names that often. But anytime you change the host name, you've got to reboot because the, anything in Raspberry Config and some other services you're going to need to look at just simply don't work right until it is rebooted under the name you changed it. So we'll get it rebooted and we'll be back up here in just a moment. Well, now that it's back up, and, and this is a good thing to note, that if you are going to change the host name, make that the last thing you do so that your other con service configurations and things you're going to need to change won't uh, give you any heartburn. So now if we go to the back into Raspberry Config, and you do all need to pr proceed that with sudo, we'll go to wireless, and we will do LWAP A. Didn't get the password right hour just you know you've been entering the passwords a lot when you just you type something and you automatically know that you've typed it wrong okay so now uh, we will go finish now we can start having some fun now what we're going to need to do is i want to get the ip address and i could go into the internet router but so 10.0.1.234 i'm going to switch over to the intel NUC and we'll do everything else from ssh we'll go to interface options ssh and hit enter yes we want to enable it Okay, that's enabled and we do not have to reboot it to restart the session and voila. All right, so that's ready to go. So we've got our remote session. And one of the things that I ran into in getting the video set up for this is all the examples that I saw on getting GPS to talk with NTP as there was either an assumption NTP was already installed or it was already installed based on the version of uh, Raspberry Pi OS or whatever was being used. But we're going to go through that right now and we'll get this taken care of so you don't miss that step and then everything else will fall into place. Directly on the Raspberry Pi that we're doing this with. So this is going to be a little bit different from what you maybe have done before. So we'll do a sudo apt get dash y. Now dash y you're, you're familiar with because that saves your map to answer it at a later point. And then we'll do install NTP. Like I said, this one installs a little bit differently. Now you may have more to install when you do this and then than I did. Of course, I'm actually doing several reinstallations. So there will be some things you may see additional files pop up. But once that goes through, then the steps we're going to go through next will all fall right into place. And I'm running this one before we put the antenna in, just so that we've got a reference of what it looks like. Okay, so we've got three devices, root hub, root hub, and and the uh, another service that's on there and I'll plug the GPS antenna in and we may or may not get something on the screen that tells us that it sees something. So we'll just rerun the command and voila, there it is. So what we've got is the Ublox AG. Okay, so we do see it show up. Okay, now we're going to find out what this is named. So I've already got the command here. So we'll do cat. And we'll pipe it through more. So it, it did name it 
TTY AMCL. Okay, let's get the connection speed here. Well, I've got the connection started. Okay, so now let's go CGPS S because we didn't get the service started. Ah, it makes a big difference. Okay, so we're starting. This may be just taking a little bit here. Now it's picked up on the internal clock. There we go. It's picking up some of the, the birds already. So that's good. So we're just going to have to let it sit for a little bit until it's got a lock. It's picking up better internally than I thought it might. Well, they say good things come to those who wait, and this is definitely one of those examples. I left this alone for about 15, 20 minutes, and as you can see, uh, it now knows our exact latitude and longitude. It's got uh, 3D fix, which is good. 3D fix is when you've got at least, well, we've got four satellites we're using, so we've got a good enough signal out of four that it's got that, so it gives you a error rate as far as it's the latitude longitude we've got is good within a certain uh, margin of error. So that's fine. It even gives you your grid square. Now the grid square is not something you might normally use, but if you're an amateur radio operator or someone who needs to know exactly where you are, then you'll know what, uh, what you're working with. And see, we lost several satellites there for a bit now it's reacquired new ones so it just snapped right back in now the next step is a few things we need to go verify first is is the drift file and this is going to remember the the drift rate across restarts and that is there if we go to the top of the configuration file and that's there so that's good put those two lines in and we will just put them down towards the bottom to GPSD to auto restart on boot up. Did run into one problem, had to do some troubleshooting. When I went to go run the, the pseudo uh, depackage reconfigured GPSD, got some errors on screen that I think are still in the video. And then I tried doing a service stop of GPSD, reran the command. This, it, then it did do what it was supposed to do but it would not restart so if all else fails you just do a restart and because of that drift file it remembered the settings it came back up got a lock so it's got us right back to where we were so now you've got a functional ntp server for the cost of a gps antenna on a raspberry pi which is about well we'll you know rough estimate hundred dollars if you get a case and all that and what the commercial folks pay is in the hundreds or thousands of dollars. Of course, it's a little bit different hardware, but still, you've at least got a functional situation here. Now, I do like having a way to test things. So I went and found an NTP check piece of software from uh, Galleon. I'm hoping you're pronouncing it systems. And you just enter in the IP address of your Raspberry Pi test. And it came back with, okay, clock not synchronized. I'm not worried about it. But at least it said stratum, secondary reference. And at least got back the information that say that there is a server up and running. So at least you've got verification independent of what you'll see when you go to set up Windows 10 or whatever Windows client you're going to have point to this one. Now there is an option. It's there is a DHCP option you can use. It's DHCP, DHCP option 42 where you can put in the IP address and that way when a workstation or whatever system comes up, it will be given that information. Now, to, if some of the IoT type devices may disregard that, there's no guarantee they support it, but if just to make it a little bit easier, hopefully, and let's face it, every time Microsoft does an update to Windows, they have a tendency to hide stuff to make it a little bit harder. So to force your workstation over to using your newly minted GPS NTP server, you'll, you can go into control panel. If for some reason setting DHCP option 42 is not available to you with whatever internet router you've got, you go down here to date and time, and then you'll go to internet time and change settings. And it, it acts like you can't do anything because it only has a drop down box. But if you just enter the IP address, click update now, then it says can synchronized, then just Click OK, OK, and then you now have another way of validating your NTP server is up and running, or if you just need to hard code the situation so that it is using your new NTP server.
If you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.